March 16th. <sighs> Can we pull off the three P? The seven point bull I've watched, gosh, I think I've seen him since 2017 from trail camera through scouting and all of that. I just turned him up today. Uh, I've kind of watched him on and off throughout the winter and he's shed. So each year he's been a few days earlier. First year it was, I think, the 21st. Last year it was uh, the 18th or 17th. Now here we are on the 16th and I just located him shed. So I don't know where those antlers are, but if I could get a look at that pedicle, I'm guessing I can kind of tell how long ago he shed. I've got a good slope to glass right now too, so maybe I could even glass his antler up. I can't imagine he's moved too far. I mean, he's only maybe a mile up the canyon from where I saw him a month ago. <laughs> it's funny because at this point in his life, he's not even a seven point, but um, I still give him that name because he used to have seven on each side, little extras on his back end, but over the years he's just regressed enough that he's lost those. I've picked up the last two years of sheds off of him. If I can get these, this will be a three-peat three years in a row. I'll do some glassing today, try to pick out the hillside from what I can see, but really I'll plan to come up tomorrow and grab those antlers. Good morning. It's March 18th now, so yesterday was was no luck finding that uh, the Seven Points antlers. We went up there, me and my dad pounded that hillside where it looked like they'd been living for about three days. What it looks like happened is after I saw that, after I saw him the other night, he came back and worked back down the canyon and into the pocket where Connor and I, my dad found his spring of 2020 sheds. And in fact, I'm looking at him right now and he's 100 yards below where we picked up one of his antlers. So I think he shed about five days ago and I think he was in here when that happened. I think then he moved up, whether that was getting pressured by somebody or just decided to move up. And then that's when he went in the pocket where I saw him without any antlers the other day. Put down about three days worth of tracks. The good thing is, is I can see on the, the north facing slopes and east facing slopes kind of where the game track trails are where animals have migrated and there's only one going across this hillside and it's at the same elevation that these uh, bulls have been working for what looks like the past few weeks so i think he shed right here where he shed a, a couple years ago it's going to be hard as hell to find it it's a brushy nasty steep hole but I think working that elevation, it seems they're staying at, it's about 7,600 feet. Um, that's gonna give me my best chance, so. Ladies and gentlemen, good night. Look what it is. Heck, freaking, yeah, man. Look at how thick this stuff is. Oh, there he is. Look at that, I was right there this morning in these trees, 50 yards away. There's his right side. Left side, you've gotta be in here too. Oh, it is a big, big seven. Always had that little, little bit shorter top end, but good heavy mass, long beams for this mountain. He's a sweet bull, has a lower cool looking third this year. Good heavy mass down low and even up here. So cool, this is an old warrior. This bull I'm guessing is over 10 after the few years of watching him. I think 16 is the first year I knew about him, 2016. And that was also his peak, 16 through 18. And now 2022, he's still around kicking. Back up on the mountain. So it's the next day, nice overcast day today. Um, we're looking for the match to the big seven point. Got dad up here today, starting high and we're working down into the two draws that we think it's most likely that his antlers lay in. Well, we are on the board with a, a white little little raghorn shed 
I actually glassed up a side-by-side -side set earlier in another area. Just around the corner there, he's on an elk trail. You could see it, uh, these bull tracks right here, going, going that way. And then he ended up dropping just on that same trail right over there. Walking up to the little guy. Extremely little. Chalk too. Tiny four point. Working back down. I just dropped my pack 50 yards lower to uh, snag this. We're gonna get back on that bull's track though. It's gonna take me right where he's been hanging out. Well, the tracks I was following kinda faded out at a bed. So now I just have to hike the area I think he would have been in. But uh, check it out. Brown two point shed. Chilling in this thick stuff. Not a lot of elk sign up in here, so I'm thinking they were hanging out back that way towards the spine. So we'll just make probably a quick little pass and then work back over to the spine. Can't find it. Nothing. In every track I could find. So we're kind of making our way west and uh, following. It's super snowed out and dried out by now, but his track where he moved from the west to the east, um, we know he had antlers when he was over around the corner here. So maybe he lost one along the way. But while we were going, I threw the scope up and where he shed two years ago, um, I glassed up a brown deer shed in this thick, thick bottom of the draw. So actually, I think we're gonna split up. Dad's gonna keep following these tracks and then work down to the, the vehicle. I'm gonna go over and snag that antler, do, do a quick pass just in case he did that same thing as the two years ago. And then I'll just take the bottom out to the, to the truck. Guys, remember, if you use code CHAG at phonescope.com on anything there, you can get 10% off. Um, I love using my phone scope just for just things like this, getting videos of sheds, animals, while I'm out on the mountain, comes in, comes in handy, so Code Chag will save you 10%. There's the deer shed, we're gonna go, go snag him, maybe he'll, he's not big, but maybe he'll lead us to the big boy's antlers. Oh my hell, guys, we talked about up there that maybe glassing that deer shed in the tiniest little pocket was like a sign to go over there. Um, I came up this ditch. Some of these guys that were up after him, they, they walked about 100 yards lower than I am right now. I mean, I'm in the heart of the ditch. Looked behind me, there is his left side laying there, tines down. N no way you're glassing it in this freaking tight pocket, nasty after we hit all the good stuff up higher me and my dad talk and we're like you know he shed down on that knob once maybe because of the storm because there was a storm around that time he kind of bailed down made his own little path down here for that storm and uh that's what looks like it happened the shed other sheds about 300 yards up from here this one is laying right here in the steep nasty bottom <laughs> there it is Heck, yeah. That's his smaller side, but he's still cool. Has some good mass down here. Pretty color. I picked the other side up, way up there. We've walked by it within a couple hundred yards all day, yesterday and today. No joke, this is needle in a haystack looking for a brown antler on a brown mountain filled with bushes and branches that all look <laughs> like antlers and tines. Here it is. Well, dad's uh, coming up to me. He's got a ways to go, probably 20, 30 minutes of hiking. Uh, while he's coming up to me, I'm gonna go grab that deer shed. 
and then uh, we'll come back to the antlers. Oh my heck, you cannot even make this up. So the antler that I thought I glassed up is an antler, <laughs> but it's a rattling antler. Somebody's rattling antler. I glassed it up from over there and it is what led me to picking that bull shed up down in that ditch. <laughs> I thought it looked dark and like very lush for a, a shed that's been laying out here for a couple months, but never did it cross my mind that it was just a rattling antler. Dad's coming up here now. He's gonna laugh when I tell him this story. Oh my gosh. He's not listening. That's the deer shed that I glassed up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a real deer. <laughs> Some prick put it over there. Said, I'm gonna glass that up someday. I thought it looked too lush to be like, yeah. I was like, damn, that's a dark shed. I don't know why. I just thought I'm gonna go past the shed. So you're getting ready to go get the horn? Yeah. And I was like, I'll just keep going up. And then I found it. Hey. Whoever dropped you that. If you don't, yeah. Whoever recognizes that. Thank you. The primos. They were probably had a decoy set up. Yeah. Here it is. So this is, he used to be a seven by seven. Now he's just a six by seven, but like I said, we call him the seven point. That's how terrible this mountain is for elk, is that you can literally say the seven point and we know exactly what bull we're talking about. <laughs> there, there's no big bulls up here. But this bull's pretty nice. And we got him matched up now. <sighs> Now we have three match sets in a row off this bull. Seven point with Connor and Dad and me. Then hit the entanglement set with the rope. Now this set. Big old warrior bull. That's a cool bull, Mark. He's a cool old bull. I hope he lives a couple more years. And then I hope nobody gets him. I hope he. We find him dead up here one day. Yeah, over 10 for sure. That had to feel pretty good coming off. He's like, get off my head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back home. We got the antlers home. Here he is, the seven point. This is his set together from this year. 2021, 2022. Here he is last year, his entanglement set, where he was caught in that, that rope. That's where he lost his ear, took his ear right off at some point in that process. That was his smallest year out of the three. Had some decent, cool looking fronts, but uh, pretty weak on that back end. And then here was his year before that. It's the first year I scooped off of him. Good fronts, great beams, over 50. Um, and then a little bit longer and stronger on that seven. Here he is, three years off of the good old seven point. Just a quick teaser. I just picked up a second year off of this bull. Pretty dang sweet badass elk. So stay tuned for this video. But for now, thanks for watching guys and uh, good luck this spring.